Okay, so this video is going to be about how to create a sign-out sheet on your website so that your students can sign out from their computers. And you will have a list, much like this one, where you can see a time-stamped record of every kid who leaves or returns to your room. So I have a whole semester worth of data here about which students left and came back to my room. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, where was, you know, this kid? A week ago at 10 a.m. I can go and see if they were signed out of the room at that time uh, and it's nice and easy for students to sign out because they can just go to your website click on a link put in their name and they're ready to go so uh, here's how it works we're gonna start with Google Docs um, just when you sign into your Google account whether it's mail or your calendar or whatever you'll see this bar up at the top on uh, one of the entries is documents so just click on documents and you'll get to a page that looks like this one you'll probably have less documents in your list than me but it looks basically like this and what we're gonna do is create a new document by clicking create new and we're gonna choose form and a form is a special kind of document that lets someone put in information and then you can collect it in a spreadsheet um, so you want to take a look up at the top here at our options these options are specific to Natick uh, you won't see them on regular old Google Docs they're only on the Natick one and uh, we want to take a look at what our options are here. The most important one here is um, require Natick Public Schools sign in to view this form. Um, this year, my students didn't have a Natick Public Schools sign in, so I didn't check this. But in the coming year, I believe they're going to, so we probably want to leave that checked. And then we also might want to check this next one, which is collect respondents Natick Public Schools username. That means that when they go to fill out your form, they're going to have to sign in with their school email address, and you're going to be able to see who filled out your form, which means they can't lie about who they are, uh, which is kind of nice. If you take a look at my spreadsheet here, uh, I closed it. But if I, if you looked at my spreadsheet, you might have known, noticed that some of the kids put in some joke names and stuff like that. So that gets rid of that problem. So I could check that box if I want to. Now, um, as far as the form goes, uh, I'm going to give it a title and a description right up here at the top. So the title is going to be um, sign out sheet. The description will be fill this out if you need to leave the room and then right down here we're just gonna put in the different pieces of information that we want from a student so the first thing I need from them is their name um, and you can basically ignore the rest of the stuff if you want to um, the question title is the most important part but you can have help text which is just some kind of uh, subtitle text that you can put in there just to clarify what you want first and last please Way the kids know they need to put in their first and last name. The type of question uh, is really not something we need to play with here, but useful in the future. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll talk about it in a minute. And then this part down here, make this a required question. What that does is if you check that box, they're not going to be able to send in the form unless they fill this question out. So I'm going to make this required because I don't want them submitting this form unless they've included their name. And when I click done, I'm ready to move on to my next question. Uh, so the next question is going to be, where are you going? And that's also just a short text answer. And even if they don't fill this out, I'm still going to let them submit the form. So I'll click Done. And let's see, those are my two sample questions that are already there. If I want to add another item, I'm actually going to go up to Add Item at the top here. And I can choose what type of item I want to add. Now, I want to give the students the ability to choose. The next question I'm going to ask is, are you leaving the room or are you coming back? And what I want to do is give them a chance to choose uh, from a couple of options. So I'm going to choose choose from a list. Question is going to be, are you leaving the room or returning? And I'm going to give them two options, leaving or returning. And I'll click done. And now I've got my three questions that I was going to ask. And I can save my form when I'm finished by clicking save. Now, um, this form, this is like the little website where we're going to, yeah, sorry, this is the page where we can create a form. If we want to see what this form is actually going to look like when it's finished, we can look down here at the bottom and you can see it says you can view the published form here and it gives you a link. If I click on that, now I'm seeing the actual form that my students will see. So if I uh, am a student and I fill this out and click submit, I've just submitted a sign out sheet. So this page is useful because we're going to need to post it on our website. So to do that, we're just going to click on this link 
right up here in our address bar at the top of the uh, browser. If you're using Safari or Firefox, you'll probably see this uh, at the top. It'll be the longest bar up at the top. And you want to copy that address using um, the edit copy command right up here in your menu. So we're going to copy that. And now we can paste that anywhere. I could paste it in an email, make an email here. I can just edit, paste, and there's a link that'll take me to this page. So I can post that in an email. I can post it, more importantly, on my website. So if my student is on my website, they can click on this link, and it will take them to the sign-out sheet. So let me show you what that ends up looking like. I'm going to go to my website for my digital media class. And you'll see over on the left side, I have this link that says sign out. And when they click on it, basically what I did was when I made this website, I, I told it that I wanted that link, this button, to take me to that page whose address I just copied. And it'll take you to that sign in page or sign out page. So I copied a link to the sign out sheet page and I used it to make a link on my website. Copy the address put it on the website. Uh, and then, so your students will go to your website and they'll see something like this where they fill out the form uh, and they click submit when they're done. And then what you'll see when you actually log into Google Docs is you'll see your sign out sheet document right here. If I click on that, that's going to take me back to all the answers or all the responses that people typed into that form. I can scroll through here and get the information that I need by looking or I can start to sort it using um, the data menu right here I can sort by column or I can filter so for example if I sort the timestamp column in backwards order I'm gonna get the most recent stuff first and then if I scroll down it goes back in time I could also sort my name if I wanted to A to Z and now I can see how many times each student signed out um, so there's a lot of useful information you can get from this um, anyway, I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email or respond in the comments on the video, and uh, I'd be happy to clarify exactly what I did.